What's good? Welcome to Dub Nation, the official show of the Utah Warriors of Major League Rugby. I am Jerem Jordan alongside Banksy. Banksy, we inch closer to the beginning of the season, which is just three months away. But guess what? Next month, the boys are going to be training, maybe even earlier here in November, uh, getting after it, getting ready for the season. Really excited. I mean, the start of MLR 2023 is quite literally right around the corner. But we've got international rugby on the plates and on our TVs before then. So lots to talk about when it comes to rugby here in Dub Nation. That's exactly right. We are on the Utah Warriors Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube account. Subscribe to the podcast version on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. Send in questions and comments if you have them. On the rundown today, the Paul Patrol. And USA beat Kenya. We'll talk to uh, Paul Asike, of course, from Dubai. From Dubai, which is pretty cool. Danny Giannoscoli returns. Former draft pick. Now uh, come back to the Utah Warriors. Crossroads Cup. We'll update you through two weeks and what the schedule looks like. And your chance to uh, get some awesome and cheap tickets to that. Nolan Tuamoheloa uh, joins USA 7s. How did they do in Hong Kong? Plus uh, USA women in the World Cup. How did they fare? We will tell you coming up. Okay, let's start with the USA Eagles trying to qualify for the World Cup. And boom goes the dynamite. In Dubai, they're in a four-team tournament. One winner advances. USA beats Kenya. Paul Oseke and Paul Mullen started 10 tries, baby. Hat tricks from Fawcett and Dyer. And uh, Bailey's brother, Mitch, scores a try in his debut. That was a nice start to those three games, Banks. And still a lot of quality rugby ahead of them, you know, and they face two unique challenges as well. Getting the big win against Kenya is what you wanted to see. Um, but there is a very fast and very skilled team in Portugal still to come and a very physical forward pack waiting in Hong Kong. So it's not an easy tournament by any stretch of the imagination, but hanging that many points on any international team, a significant win for USA. Bonus point try, of course, with 10. And uh, here's how the uh, standings look. Again, one team emerges in the final spot for the World Cup. Got to get it here. Uh, Portugal defeated Hong Kong 42-14. to 14. So next up is uh, Hong Kong on Saturday for the Eagles and then November 18th against Portugal. Hopefully the boys qualify for the World Cup. They can come home and enjoy Thanksgiving. And pretty cool that the Pauls, Mullen and Lasique, are heavily involved in this. Trying to get the U.S. into the World Cup, where they probably should have qualified earlier, let's be honest. But they can still take care of business in this tournament. I mean, at this point, you control your destiny, right? You got the big first win. You don't have to count on any favors from anybody. It'll be interesting to see the adjustments they make, specifically against Hong Kong with a big forward pack. You know, Paul, really, if you watch back in that game, Lasique was really a decoy almost. They... They would mark two, sometimes three defenders on Paul Lasique in the middle, and that's why the ball was able to get outside of him so much Is he really kind of almost ran that old-school pivot position in the centers there because they were queuing up on him so much. So now the, the focus will shift to our other Paul in the forward pack with a big physical lineup coming in Hong Kong. So they're going to have to match that forward play, which hopefully will open things up in that center line now for Paul Lasique to shine in this next match. He's such a physical player, and uh, to draw that attention, as a healthy Paul Asike was back, by the way, after breaking his hand, uh, we spoke to him yesterday from Dubai. Busy dude, getting ready, but uh, took some time with us yesterday. Here's that conversation with Paul Asike from Dubai. Paul, first off, thanks for taking the time. I know you guys are busy, and uh, you're 11 hours uh, you know, ahead. This is, this is fun. You're on the, literally on the other side of the globe in Dubai. How's yeah. Dubai so far, by the way? No, nah, no, nah, it's all good. Um, yeah, it's my first time here. So uh, we've been on the road for quite a while now. We're going in, we're, we've just passed week four. So we're in week five now. Uh, we spent three weeks in in South Africa. Then we've been here for about a week now. And then, uh, yeah, we're going into week five. And it's, uh, it's, it's massive here, man. I didn't realize how, you know, it's skyscrapers everywhere and really modern sort of a feel where we are. So, no, nah, it's cool. A friend of mine visited once, and he said it's Vegas on crack. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. That's what some of the boys have compared it. They're like, it's a nicer, bigger version of 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 the Strip in Vegas. So, no, it's awesome. It's amazing, man. Walk me through sort of the emotions and mentality of this group, because obviously the sense of urgency is high to qualify for the World Cup, which we'll talk about the match against Kenya and, and uh, Hong Kong and Portugal coming up, but also yeah. like. You've had to put away the disappointment of not making it yet. 
You had two matches that weren't tests, but they were tune-ups in, in South Africa. Those yeah. didn't go great, but you were just working out some kinks, right? And then you yeah. actually play Kenya, uh, and, and you blow them out. So how, what's the emotional and mental state of this team right now as you try and make a very important uh, qualifying into the Rugby World Cup? Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head. Urgency, that's the word that comes to my mind as well. Um, everyone here and is uh, we're sort of all under pressure, and that's basically the reality of our situation. Uh, we had, like you said, we had two opportunities against um, Uruguay and against Chile, and you know, it wasn't in our favor. And so, we're now under the pump to try and get that last qualifying spot. And uh, yeah, that's why we've had so much time together. You know, uh, a lot of those those South American teams have had time together, you know, they're playing the same league, or, you know, they have good chemistry. And so with us, uh, from what the coaches have explained to us, we got together so early so that we could get some some of that cohesion, you know. And uh, the three weeks in South Africa was good, you know, to be able to fine tune a few things and just really try and figure it out, really, what, what how we're going to go into this. And so it was a good start against Kenya over the weekend. And then but yeah, that's one of three. We got it's we have to win all of them to qualify. So um, we have uh, Hong Kong this week. Yeah, so they're gonna be they're gonna be much better than Kenya uh, from what we've observed. And um, so yeah, we're just cracking on. And it's been long, but like yeah, uh, we're we're just kind of ready to just rock and roll, you know. So we're talking to Paula CK, Utah Warrior, USA Eagle, from BYU Cougar. That's what's up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> good boys today. Let's go. Okay, I yeah. want to go back to something you said. You've been together for about five weeks. Who are you absolutely tired of in the USA camp right now? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's sick of everyone. Nah, uh, nah, but it's been hard though. Just being away from my family, as you know, yeah. I have two young ones, uh, yep. two two newborn twins, and so. It's been really hard in that aspect. So I think that adds to the chippiness. But everyone was kind of over that in the third week. You know, it's kind of like a, a football training camp. You're ready to just hit the season. And so uh, when last week rolled around, you could tell a bit of a difference, you know, like, okay, this is game. You know, it's a, it's a game. So it was nice to finally have that sort of atmosphere around here rather than uh, you know, it's just, a it's just a training camp week, you know, where the coaches can just uh, run us off our legs, you know, run a, hunt, uh, a whole bunch of Ks during the week. And so last week it felt it was really good because it felt like a test week, you know, the training, the intensity, and short and sharp. So, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, and you've been on a, a two-year uh, mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You've been away from family. Like, this is like a shorter period of that, right, but like with a different cause, I suppose, in Dubai, in South Africa. Have you been to every continent? but uh, Antarctica now? Yeah, yeah, I have actually. I actually noted that, well, my wife told me, she was like, well, you're going to be, you're going to have been, you know, visited through rugby every continent apart from Antarctica. So, uh, yeah, that was actually pretty cool to know. I had to just That's go cool. through the old archives and confirm, but yeah. Let's let's get a test match uh, on the ice and uh, yeah. that box for everybody. Uh, I'd gladly go. You can visit Antarctica, by the way. It's like a thing you can... Just do, you know, it's not yeah, like, no, you don't I, have to be I, like I a scientist to go there. Yeah, no, I've seen like they have boats and stuff that take you out there and whatnot. Yeah. And, From, I think, Chile. Yeah. You just go down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm just not sure if I want to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, who knows, man, you know? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about uh, the Kenya match. So you guys, huge sense of urgency, like you mentioned. You guys scored 10 tries. Uh, hat tricks from Dylan Fawcett Christian Dyer, uh, Bailey Wilson's brother Mitch, on debut, scores a try, like, that was a great yeah. performance. What? Why did that go so well in match one? Man, uh, yeah, just like I said, I think the three weeks that we had in South Africa to build some chemistry, and it was tough. Like, South Africa was really tough because the coaches, like I said, it was like a training camp uh, to compare it to American football. So they, because there's no weeks, they can there's no game day, they can just – uh, do what they need to do to get the best out of us. And it was a tough three weeks. And and I thought those boys that you mentioned, uh, they all, they're all really hard workers as well, you know. So they're all really fit. And so they're able to sort of do those things. So, like, some of the boys are reaching almost 8K in that game, you know. Over one of them, a couple, well, 
the two wingers reached over 8k you know for the game oh, nice. so, so that's massive um you know, it just goes to show their sort of work ethic and, you know, you can actually monitor those things with their GPS units. And, uh, yeah, so, but, yeah, like I said, I think the boys, we understand the, the severity of our situation right now. It literally is do or die for the World Cup. So um, everyone's going to have to give everything they have in order for us to get the results that we want. So, yeah. Bonus point win. Uh, you tied with Portugal with, with five points there. You got Hong Kong coming up on Saturday, Portugal uh, after that. Um, how's the hand, by the way, coming off a, a broken hand a couple months ago? Yeah, no, it's it's um, it's um pretty much fully 100 now. So, uh, yeah, that was a bit of a – the last two years I've had a lot of hiccups, you know, as you, as you probably know. So um, it's part of it's a bit of old age and just withering away, basically. But, uh, no, the body felt good. Um, I like when I come away from a game with no injuries, and me, I tell my wife this, it's like it's almost a win in and of itself, you know. So, no serious injuries, and you know, we're good to go for the following week. Yeah, and when you get a certain age, uh, that you take it as a win, right? You know what I mean? I don't think yeah. of you as old, but I do see a little, uh, you know, salt, yeah, through, no, right? <laughs> yeah, there's there's some grays, it's you know, there's some grays coming in, so. It's uh, it's sort of my trophies down here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is the BYU national championship. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a Harlequin, Harlequin, uh, you know, time. Yeah, yeah. that's 100%. awesome. Man. Talking to Paula CK from Dubai uh, during this Rugby World Cup qualifying tournament. Obviously, this World Cup in France next year is one thing, and then 31 is way out there, right? But um. You, you got to be in the World Cup if you're USA Rugby, right? We, we saw with soccer four years ago, Paul, where they didn't qualify, and that was a huge deal, right? Now you guys start off on the right foot, on the front foot there. You got two matches left. What's the conversation in camp of, obviously, we got to get this done, but, like, how how do how are you going to do it? How are you going to make this happen to ensure that the U.S. qualifies? Yeah. Um, first and foremost, the coach just sort of touched base. Uh so we played on the Sunday and it was our Monday morning. So when was that? Yesterday morning. It's basically our review of the game. The first thing is not to get carried away. You know, we had a good result in our first game. But um, if I'm going off the cuff here, Kenya is probably, um, probably the worst, te worst team out of uh, Hong Kong and Portugal. So we know we, we've got an uphill battle coming ahead of us. And um, it's just, do just checking off the boxes from now on. You know, we're... We've had it. We've got a good foundation under us with the first four weeks, and now it's about man, maintaining and trying to uh, fine tune our, our structure and our game plan. So that's basically the the plan of this week. We're not changing anything. We're keeping it simple, and we're just trying to nail down those things. So that's sort of uh, the angle that we're trying to come from this week. So everyone, nail your roles, and um, yeah, we just just keep the train going, really. In football, they say do your one eleventh. In rugby, they don't say do your one fifteenth. Um, yeah, <laughs> but maybe we'll yeah. maybe we'll figure that out. For yeah. for context, Portugal beat Hong Kong forty two fourteen. So you're focusing on that. Meanwhile, the Utah Warriors are continuing to gather a roster for next year. Obviously, Greg Cooper is a new head coach. Uh, I'm sure yeah. you've been following all of this. What do you think of uh, uh, what will we're just three months out uh, from the season? But what's going on with the Utah Warriors in year two for you back? Yeah, no, it's been good. Um. There's been a few calls and whatnot, and uh, Ian, the new strength coach as well, he's been in touch with us. Uh, and so, no, nah, it's, it's exciting. I've seen a couple of the signings. I saw Logan came back, and I touched base with him, and and uh, it's it, he's he's going to be a massive addition to the team, in my opinion. Um, no, nah, but I've seen it, and I've just been sort of keeping track on that as I've been, been away. But uh, I think it's exciting times ahead, you know. Um, and it's been awesome, like me, Paul Mullen, and even Angus. So the three weeks in South Africa, Angus was my roommate. So nice. <laughs> we had a lot of time to talk about things. And uh, now it was really cool talking with him and, and the potential. And like, um, yeah, basically, I think this could be a huge year for us. So that was that was the long story short of uh, of what we talk about. And yeah, I think we've got to, you know, we just keep on turning the wheels and, and uh, come preseason. Hopefully, I mean, that's the big thing that the message that I've been getting from coach is that is everyone's holding themselves accountable. So during this time that we're not, you know, face to face together. And uh, so, yeah, so that we can have a good season next season. So.
One guy that you are face to face with in Dubai is Paul Mullen. Uh, you both started yep. uh, against Kenya. Yep. We're coming up with nicknames. The one I like the most is the Paul Patrol. Uh, playing off <laughs> Paw Patrol. If you have little kids, you're super aware yeah. of that. If you're not, you're like, what the heck is that? Paw yeah. Patrol. Uh, you know, chase on the case, if you will. Um, yeah. What's the nickname you like the most of, of the Pauls? Because there's a few out there. I'm trying to recall the others, but I like the Paul Patrol the most. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Kimball messaged us, I think, last week or the – no, before the game, actually saying good luck. And Paul replied – Paul Mullen replied, you know, thanks, Kimball, appreciate the message. And then he put small Paul. <laughs> <laughs> That's Paul Mullen that said that. And then, that's, a, um, that's a tight end prop. Yeah, that's a tight end. And then I yeah. said, you know, I appreciate it. And I think I put Big Paul or something. So um, <laughs> we could have Small Paul and Big Paul. I don't know. <laughs> the other way around, though, because he's, I mean, I'm big, but he's much, you know, bigger than I am. Yeah. So, uh, no, nah, I don't know. Paul. I don't really have a, I don't really have a little nickname for us, but we need one. Yeah, one of you was Saul, but then you became Paul, which is crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're trying to baptize well, fools uh, on the rugby pitch, I suppose. Now. Yeah, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to think of some things now. The yeah, the Paul Patrol really hits for me, but it sounds Paul like Patrol. Yeah, I like that more. one too. Yeah, it it just. I hope to you mention know, that to him. Pop, pop culture. Paul doesn't have a kid yet, right? So he's not. No, like, I don't know. He's not in the the game there. Like he's not in the he game. Know all the Disney Junior. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't know Bluey. Uh, I know. think I think Paul's going to be such a good dad when he gets there. I mean, oh, this he'll is, crush it, dude. Man, yeah, I think he's going to be an awesome dad. Yeah. You know, he's he's rocking the handlebars now, right? Oh, very nice. And that's by yeah. choice. That's not like, hey, I broke team rules or, yeah. or something, right? <laughs> no, that's by choice. So we had a silly shirt night tonight. So I actually literally, I, I got on the camera like right before I was going to enter this meeting and then I had to take it off because it was it was the yellow dodgeball. Uh, I was my roommate's Halloween costume and it was nice. I didn't have a silly shirt so I was like I need to borrow one. Um <laughs> so his one he had uh, like an anarchy vest. He's mm -hmm. rocking the mustache, handlebars and everything. And I turned to him and I said, "Man, you're you're really rocking that. I like that look on you, man. All he needs now is to bring back the mohawk. Yes. Remember that one?" Yep. And then he's I mean he's rock solid. Dude, he looks like I think what people in Dubai think Americans look like. Yeah, like he's Irish. 100%. <laughs> it's like, no, this 100%. guy's Irish. He's not. He's not. He's one of us, but he's Irish. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's one hundred percent. Like you'll get caught off guard. You'll think he's gonna be like, "Hey, brother, what's good?" But he's gonna be like in his Irish accent, you know, like a hundred percent English Irish accent. Yeah, he's like, "No, I'm from Houston. Go Astros." We're like, hey, dude, what, "What? Come on, man! I thought you went to Texas and m What?" <laughs> Oh, no, that's hilarious. I like Paul. He's awesome. He's great. He's been a great addition. Um, it's it's been awesome to have two of the top tight head props in USA rugby on the team with yeah, no, every week. It's like, oh my gosh, how good like the backup is a is a eagle. Uh, yeah, which is pretty yeah. crazy and, and amazing. Well, sweet. Uh don't want to take too much uh, of your time here. Thanks for joining us from Dubai, Paul. Best of luck, obviously, against uh, Hong Kong and Portugal. Go get this done for Team USA, baby. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Thanks, thanks, Jerome. Good to talk to you, man. That's Paul Asike from Dubai yesterday. Fun conversation uh, w with Paul. Do you have a preferred nickname for the Pauls? I think I'm buying into the Paul Patrol. I wasn't sold <laughs> on it at first, but like I'm a rubble on the double kind of guy. Nice. You know? I got a 13 and a nine year old, so that's really starting to hit home and sink in. I'm, I think I'm on board with the Paul Patrol. It's pretty. It, listen, if if you've got a better nickname, tweet at us, uh, hit up the Utah Warriors uh, socials. It will come back to us. I promise. We'll uh, we'll use it during the regular season. It'll be fun. If you want to see the Paul Patrol in action, make sure you get your tickets, guys. All right. MLR 2023 season tickets available right now to see the boys in red and black rock the four stripes at Zions Bank Stadium. Call 801-477-7652. Lock up your season tickets now for Utah Warriors rugby. Hey, uh, another signing. Danny Giannoscoli returns to the Utah Warriors. 25-year-old, six foot two, a fly half, can play fullback as well. Second round pick in 2020. Had a nice Utah Select season. Uh, that fall didn't ultimately play on the team, uh, you know, last season, uh, two-time college All-American, but he is back. Uh, what do you think of the Danny Giannoscoli signing? I think this is great for Danny Cheesesteak coming back from the East Coast to Utah, <laughs> where I know he feels loved, and uh, and 
I know that he has, even with the separation in between his previous signing and this stint, constantly stayed in contact with management about his development and what his intentions are. So I think this is really a, a developmental decision for Danny G and uh, and a good one for the Utah Warriors. Played at uh, you know, Loyola University in Maryland, uh, a, a guy that, uh, yeah, a, a nice, nice addition. Uh, coming back to the team, he knows what the team's about, obviously a new head coach and whatnot, but let's take a look at the fly halves who are in the mix this season. Joel Hodgson signed uh, from the Premiership in England. Cliven Lipser is back, Namibian International. Danny Giannoskali, of course, as we mentioned. Caleb Mockney can play 10, but uh, uh, more of a fullback uh, at this point. Obviously played a lot of fly half, so that's that's a nice group right there with some uh, international experience, obviously. I think it's a great look with some well-rounded guys that can really kind of interchange between the 10 and 15. We saw Cliven Lopser play a lot of time at 15 last year. Caleb Mockney obviously played a lot of time at fly half. I really think it's Jolie Hodgson's jersey uh, as he comes in as the most experienced guy. And it'll be great to see Caleb back at 15 in his more traditional position throughout this season and see what kind of, of uh, chemistry and attack they can develop. Yeah, those are some playmakers right there. And uh, Cliven Lopes have proven he can play around the pitch as well, which is uh, pretty exciting. And it's a long season. Again, you kind of look and you go, well, where does Cliven play? And where does – if Caleb's the fullback and Joel's the fly half, where is Cliven? It's like, well, Cliven's going to play a lot because – Guys get roughed up, banged up. So you only get two bye weeks in 18 weeks. It's all good, man. It's all good. Speaking of uh, getting banged up, hey, we've had some nice matches in the Crossroads Cup. Some nice physical play as we take a look at some of the scores from week one and two. The Bull Moose beat the Trappers 41-31. You throw the records out when those two get together. And the Wranglers beat the Gray Wolves 39-34. Then in week two, last week, the Bull Moose beat the Wranglers 44-27. And the Trappers... They got after it, 60 to 24, taking down the Gray Wolves. This has been a fantastic competition with stars on all sides of the ball. A little Tomasi Tonga sighting. Is that what I see there in that picture for the Moose? <laughs> ah, I, I know the kids rock, rocking the green and white. So there's a lot of faces and a lot of leadership around this competition. And uh, if you want to see more of it, don't forget, we've got more coming up. Steeler Field and Provo uh, at for the Crossroads Cup. That's week three coming up uh, this weekend, November 12th. And then the championship week at Zions Bank Stadium, again, the 19th at noon and two. You can get your tickets at uh, crossroadscup.com. Get all the information about who's playing when and where. And there is a special deal if you want to come and check it out, that if you buy tickets, they're 10 bucks at the door. They're buy one, get one. If you bring a non-perishable food item to donate to uh, to the food bank. That's awesome, and uh, those are those are nice, uh, cheap tickets to see some good quality rugby as these guys continue what they hope is a pathway to uh, to the Utah Warriors, which uh, the Warriors have one of the best, if not the best, setups in Major League Rugby right now with pathways of local players to be able to play professionally, which is awesome. Okay, let's talk about a former Warrior who uh, made a bit of news joining the USA Sevens. Nolan Tuamoheloa was uh, added to the USA Sevens for the Hong Kong uh, Sevens Tournament. Uh, the United States took sixth after losing uh, the fifth place game to Argentina. But uh, shout out to Nolan for making that squad. I think this is a great look for the Uso. You know, he worked hard, had some struggles when he went to Atlanta, overcame those uh, on and off the rugby pitch and really got a shot through just hard work and kind of busted his butt to get on the radar for that seven squad. And now can count himself an eagle with a cap on that sevens team. And, uh, and really a good showing for the time that he spent on the field, too. Congratulations, Nolan. Okay, Ma'anono is returning to San Diego. Uh, third or fourth year in the league. Uh, certainly a big name. What do you think of the, the move for San Diego to keep the All Black uh, back in Major League Rugby? You know, Ma'a, even at his age, is still good for probably a half dozen really good plays in every game. He's not the Ma'anonu that he used to be. He's not going to be as dynamic, but he's going to be solid on defense. And really it's his IQ and his leadership around the field for that team. That's going to make the big difference. And don't forget, he still is Ma'anonu. So those line breaks and those offloads will still be there, even if they are maybe a half step slower than they used to be. Hey, still fun to have him uh, in town and playing and, and uh, yeah, he's Ma'anonu, man. It's, it's awesome. Okay, and last but not least, World Cup date. Uh, the USA women uh, got to the quarters, lost to Canada, so ended pool play with a loss to Canada, and then Canada got them again. Uh, so a little, little bit of a disappointing result for the USA, not advancing a little further, but uh, uh, shout-out to the USA women for uh, repping in the World Cup. 
I don't, you know, it was a quality tournament for the women, obviously not the result that they wanted, uh, really could have made it to the, to the semis in that realistically with their play and, uh, and un- unable to reach that goal. But what a fun world cup to watch the rise of women's rugby, the viewership of women's rugby and the quality being played internationally. That France team is unbelievable. That Kiwi team obviously stacked full of talent. So uh, an, an incredible women's world cup. And it gives us something to look forward to when we get to host it here in the, U- in the United States. It's going to be fantastic. Can't wait for that. Okay, uh, we are a couple weeks out from the roster release. We're going to have the schedule at some point. Obviously, we talked last time about Chicago being added uh, to the league and what that means. And uh, the fact that, uh, you know, we're going to have the dispersal draft and so on and so forth. So we've got stuff that's going to happen the next couple of weeks. We'll be with you every other week in the offseason. Then once we get to February, we'll get uh, every week in season. So uh, kits. Kits are going to come out as well. So we've got a lot that's coming up in the next uh, you know, few months here as we get through the holidays. And then, boom, we're right into preseason, and we are right there. So cannot wait for that. Stay with us, and make sure you like and share this episode of Dub Nation and follow the Utah Warriors on social media. For Paul Asike from Dubai, uh, Mason Benson and Banksy in an RV, I'm Jerem Jordan. Go Warriors! <laughs>